Whoa, you guys, awesome news. Capture One Pro just released a new service update, Capture One version 12.1. Now, there's a lot of new things in this particular service update. We're talking about new grid tool, updated overlay tool, uh, they have complete Apple script coverage, barcode scanning tool, there's a next capture metadata and keywording tool, let's see, new guides, sort of setup area, there's a next capture backup tool, uh, workspace and tool locks, dedicated Capture One Studio workspaces, you know, and a whole host of other bug fixes for both Mac and PC. Really, it's, the list is too long to dictate here. Um, you can go look it up and, and check out the service update and, uh, you know, at CaptureOne.com. So the main thing is, is, you know, well, how do you update? You know, more often than not, if you already are a user of Capture One, you can go into your preferences and go to the Update tab and see what's available and check for updates. And it'll pop up. It'll little be like a little hyperlink. Usually shows up blue. You can click on it. But I've found that uh, in this case, it's actually a new service update. You have to go directly to the website. And so I just, you know, go to Google here and type in Capture One 12.1 Update. And it takes me here. And we're going to look at the second one here that's from Phase 1 themselves, Capture One Service Release Phase 1. So this is the one that we're going to want, download Capture One 12.1. And you come down here and you can see that it's a, you know, pretty much brand new service release. So, you know, there's a lot to go through here, a lot to unpack as far as uh, some of the new things that they've released for this. But uh, I'm going to talk about some of my favorite ones. You know, the ones that I'm most excited about right now would be the Grid Tool would be the overlay tool. Uh, I'm very excited about the idea of this barcode scanning ability, um, particularly with the idea that there's, it, it's I think presumably so that you can barcode scan something in and it goes into your next capture naming, but with AppleScript and I'm hoping that maybe we can open up the possibility of actually being able to barcode scan SKU data for particular product type companies um, that have SKUs where you can get that information right into the next capture metadata or even keywording. Um, I think the functionality of that would be a major time saver and I'm going to talk about that in a bit. And I'm excited about some of the new, the new guide customizability as well. That's pretty nice. And then at the end of this, we'll talk about some of the things I'd like to see in another release, uh, some of the things that I keep hounding my friends at Capture One about, uh, hey, you know, it'd be great to see this and some of the reasons why. So let's walk you through some of the new features here. So the first tool we're going to talk about is the grid tool. Um, used to be, you know, you could get up here, you can customize on your toolbar just the basic grid. It's nice you have that shortcut up here that's kind of always been there. Uh, it's nice now that they've separated your guides from the grids as far as two separate clickable little widgets up here on the, the toolbar. And you also have the you know, ability to customize the toolbar any way you want, whether you want just icons or icons with text. But as far as the grid goes, it's nice because now we have some different options. If I find my floating tool for grid, which you can find under Window, Create Floating Tool, come down here, Grid, and it creates that tool if it's not already defaulted to come up. Mine happens to be in the lens area of, uh, of Capture One here. And I have different types. I have the regular sort of rule of thirds rectangle. I have the golden ratio available. And I have this Fibonacci spiral, which is kind of fun. And, you know, I can choose different orientations of it, mirroring and clockwise to, to rotate it in different ways. Um, if I'm looking at the rectangle, then maybe this particular grid setup is a little hard to see. I can change the color of it on the fly right here. And that's, that's a nice feature for sure. So that's one aspect of this new service update that uh, is really handy, is that now we have a dedicated floating tool for the grid that we can go and customize a little bit. And it'll be nice now that they've got that implemented to see how they improve that over time as well. The next new service release that I'd like to talk about with version 12.1 is the overlay tool. Now, many times we're working on set and a client, you know, maybe we're shooting to the cover of a magazine or a cover of a catalog publication, uh, something of that nature. And we want to be able to design the photograph to the type that is going to have to be laid in there. In some cases, they might have artwork already prepped and available for us. In some cases, I've had to create the artwork or it's, uh, you know, a Photoshop file that's already flattened and I have to remove the text and create a transparent background so it'll float in the scene nicely. 
More often than not, there's a specific crop that's coming about as well for that particular item. And, you know, it's, they'll say, oh, well, we, it, this should be eight and a half by 11, 11. That's the size of the publication. And so then I'll have to, you know, make sure that we're able to see the edges of that. Because if it's just floating text, it may not be, it may not be proportional in to, to the size of the actual cover if they're just you know, be able to move it around and zoom it in and make it larger or smaller and, and might get a false read on how big that text actually is. So in some cases, I would actually have to look, create this overlay and then put a stroke on the outside border so that we're able to see the actual crop and then we can crop to that. Um, now there's a new feature in this where we can actually follow the crop, which is nice. So I'm gonna come here to my overlay tool here. And we'll take a look at this particular tequila shot. We have this tequila overlay that I've created. I'll put it in here. So here's this, you know, sort of fake magazine cover I have going. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab this moving tool and I can sort of move this around. And you'll see that the document that I created has this black stroke around it so that the art director is able to see, well, where is the actual edge of the eight and a half by 11 crop and where do we want the text to fall? Because if it was just this tequila monthly, uh, they might be you know, making it larger or smaller and it might not actually be reality of how big the actual font should be on the cover of the publication. So something like this, I'm able to you know, look and see this stroke that was created and this is just a you know, transparent PNG cr that was created for this. But what's nice is that in this new service update, they now have the ability to follow the crop. So now I don't need to create the stroke on a piece of artwork that we're using for the overlay. And let me show you that. I have this one that's loaded up here, overlay no stroke. So this one doesn't have the stroke. So if an art director came in and said, well, we want, you know, eight and a half by 11. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that. Eight and a half by 11 and in there. Let's get there. Oop. Okay. And they go to create that 8.5 by 11 crop, like so. And they say, oh, this is the crop that we like. I can choose to follow the crop. And now, as we move that overlay around, it moves the crop with it. And so that's a very nice feature because um, now I don't have to create that, you know, if I'm teching for another another photographer, I don't have to, to create that for them. Um, you know, I could scale this up now to 100, 0, 0, and at that point we can decide, well, we want it to go a little bit, you know, a little bit bigger in relation to this, and over here that's looking nice, leaving some room for other copy. So that's a nice feature, don't have to create that stroke any longer for that. Another nice addition that they've made to the overlay tool here is that it's saving a list of the various overlays here. So now I can look and I can say, oh, I have this email one, um, I have this original tequila overlay, now I have the one with no stroke. You know, if I had a variety of repeat clients, for example, and they have, you know, maybe one publication is eight by 11, not eight and a half by 11 for their cover, and I could indicate, um, you know, the, the client and eight, you know, cover shot, have these different things already preloaded so that when I work with them again, I don't have to worry about reloading, getting the artwork. It's like it's already there. Um, unless they change their cover or the, the font or colors or anything like that and they have an update, in which case we just make a new overlay and load it in. But it's nice being able to kind of bounce around at the beginning of a job. I can get all of the artwork that's needed for the various things, like maybe they have some sort of, you know, sales thing for an internet shot, you know, 30% off or something like that. And I'm able to load all that at the right at the beginning of the day on day one and have those throughout the whole job that I can just grab out of there. A lot of art directors are pretty capture one savvy these days. And in some cases they jump in here and it's nice if it's already preloaded, they can go in and easily find their artwork that they created for the publication. So that's a great feature and I'm very happy that they've updated the overlay tool for that. That's very handy. So another new feature of this release is the ability to use a barcode scanner. Um, I think this is, it's probably more for the Capture One Studio product, uh, more so than the standalone Capture One Pro. Um, you know, you have to think about, you know, you're in a large warehouse of products, companies like Amazon, for example, things like that. Um, you know, Pier One Imports, Pottery Barn, those kinds of companies that have lots and lots of product. 
and they want to be able to find that product photograph in their database back at the office. They want to be able to type in the SKU number of that particular product and see all of the photographs that have been taken over time. Uh, so that they don't, you know, repeat certain things or if maybe there's an environment, a style that they haven't touched upon yet with that particular product, it can help art directors come up with new fresh ideas. Um, and it can generally just help them find the most recent shot in their large database of images. So being able to append the proper SKU number to the things that are in the photograph would be a really important feature. I'm, I'm hopeful that this barcode scanning feature has this capability. Right now the service release has talked about really that it's barcode scanning just to be able to put in the name for the next capture. And that's great, but I'm hoping that with maybe some of this Apple scripting and um, you know, some of these other things that we're able to actually append metadata upon a barcode scan. So maybe that a barcode or a QR code sticker could be appended to the actual item that's in the photograph, which would allow a digital tech or a stylist assistant as they're prepping items for the stylist to place into the shot to actually use a scanner that would scan all of the SKU information and immediately load it into the metadata for that shot for the next capture. You know, there's been times where we have to come in and, and append SKU manually and we come over here to, you know, a digital tech would come over to the metadata panel here and have to actually come down into the metadata, down into the IPTC area, into the description, and then paste in SKU data from another document. You know, so that maybe they would have something like this, they'd have a large list of SKUs, they'd have to identify each item in the shot. So, you know, something like a shot, say, like this, right? I'm gonna go ahead and get, my, get rid of my overlay here. You know, on a shot like this, you know, typical sort of like furniture company, they might have, uh, you know, a number of different skewable items. Maybe the chandelier is a custom item that you can order. Maybe the uh, side table that the TV sitting on, the coffee table, the rug, the rocking chair, the pillows, the throw, the couch, uh, all these different items that a company would want a skew associated with so that if somebody back at the home office says, hey, what about that rocking chair? They can type in the SKU in their database and find all of the photographs that have that chair in it. A really handy time-saving feature. I'd, and I'd be interested to see this barcode scanner work in a studio environment and see what its capabilities are. Now, right now, that you know, another new feature you can see is in the next capture adjustments pane here. We have the ability to now append for the next capture that's coming in what that metadata should be. And that could be helpful in terms of if you're working and you really just want, say, you know, your boilerplate copyright information to come into all the images that come in all the time, you could set that up and you could make sure that for every shot that comes in is appended with that information as it shows up as you're tethered to the program. You know, I could see how, you know, in a real working environment, typically what happens with a shot like this is they begin, stylists begin, you know, kind of putting things together, but maybe an art director then comes over and says, oh, I really don't like that stump that the wine is on. Can we replace that with this other product? Or, you know, that particular coffee table is fine, but can we get the other smaller one? Um, so to append the metadata for that kind of skew information from at the start could cause you some more work at the end because then, you go, well, we changed that and now it's something else. And I could see how that would be a little bit of a hairdo. It'd be better to just do it at the end. Just go in, they've got the final hero shot. We're gonna run in with a scanner, scan everything. That'll load right into the program and you're good to go. But I'm curious to see how you know things like this will shake out as different photographers and different workflows and different companies use it and take advantage of it. So another thing that's a little bit different in uh, this new service release is the guides feature. So now we have you know the ability to, you know we've we've had these guides to allow us to see vertical and horizontal lines. That's been very nice. We can certainly come in and add guides. There was a time when this information lived in our preferences, where we come into preferences and actually find the guides in here, but um, that's not the case anymore, it seems like, and it looks like they've actually moved this information right in here to the view menu. And now we have the ability to come in and actually customize our guides. We can change the color of our guides depending upon what we're doing. If we don't want them to be a red guide, it could be magenta, things like that. Just depends on what, what you're up to. 
I would like to see this, you know, from what I've read, the, they supposedly have a floating tool available for guides themselves. You know, I come down and I only see the grid floating tool, so potentially I do not have Capture One Studio loaded up here. Maybe that's a studio-only product, um, studio-only feature. But I'd like to see the standalone Capture One Pro get the floating window for guides as well. That would be very helpful. Because sometimes we want more than one guide and uh, to, you know, check for alignment of different things. So those are some of my favorite features of the new releases. Um, you'll have to go through and, and read and see what's applicable to you. Certainly photographers who are not working in a heavy studio environment with lots and lots of product um, that they have to keep track of some of these different features, you know, may not be able to take advantage of the barcode scanning feature. But for a photographer that wants to say append their own boilerplate copyright metadata and information to their images, all the images that populate through the computer, certainly the next capture adjustments metadata feature here would be helpful for that. There's some things I still would love to see in Capture One. You can see, you know, um, how I have some crops down here that are saved in the program. I'm hoping that at some point Capture One will figure out here, along with the overlay information, a way to organize the crops so that they're not just in a loose list here. And the main reason is there's times I might be working for one client and then I go and work with a competing client and they might, that art director might be adept with Capture One and they come in and they see the competing client's crops in here. And, you know, if you're working a lot for repeat clients, it's nice to not have to continually plug in their information in here over and over again when every time you work with them, it's always the same set of crops that you might be working with. Cover, back cover, some internet shots, things like that. So having the ability to kind of hide in little folders in here and to be able to plug that in a folder, call it something, and, and that way it's hidden. Maybe even being able to load those from the back end so we don't even see them here until we're actively working on them, having sort of a show and hide feature for various folders of crops that we have loaded. That would be really nice because I've definitely been on set where clients have gotten a little weird when they see, you know, some, some crops in there from a competing client. And uh, so that would really save, you know, photographers' butts, I think, if Capture One could figure out a way to do that. And the same goes for the overlay feature, being able to have a lot of different repeat overlays already loaded in uh, for cover, back cover, things like that, but to be able to hide those so that competing clients don't see what you're up to on the days you're not working with them. And then finally, you know, it'd be nice if, like I said, with the, you know, the, the guides to actually have a floating tool available for that. So um, I'm very happy with what they've done with this release. However, I would like to see, you know, some of these little things get tweaked in the future. So hopefully them Creating this is the new doorway into them uh, maybe taking some of these suggestions and, and tweaking it a little bit more to make it even better. And finally, for those of you who are Fuji shooters, you'll be happy to know that Capture One has updated some functionality with rendering of raw images, as well as improved its tethering capability for those of you who like to tether your camera to the computer. If you're not currently a Capture One user, but you'd like to check it out, check out the link below to purchase yourself a copy. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs down. If you'd like to leave a comment, leave a comment below. We'll get back to you. If you'd like to subscribe for more of this content, you can subscribe up there or down there and hit that little bell and we'll notify you of new content. And thanks for, to Canon and B&H for providing some of the equipment to make these videos possible. Thanks for watching.